coach. I heard you speak down in Jackson. You talked about a long season and being able to substitute guys. Will you just do that in situational, or you think you'll just you'll, – I was thinking of the offensive line more than anybody else. You think you'll use those guys every other series, or you don't know? Well, we actually use the same – standard for every position. We're going to look at every position based on how healthy we are. I can use the O-line, for example, in, in, in this situation because that's what you asked about. We feel like we have eight guys who can play, so eight guys will be in that rotation. They have kind of met the standard to start or play and contribute for us on Saturday. Some will play more than others, but we want to, we want to play all eight so we can. it helps us winning the war of attrition. It helps us keep some guys fresh. And uh, we want to develop those guys. So we're going to play all eight of them if that's – if we show up with eight healthy guys on Saturday. So, you, you know, you come in as the air raid guy, but just watching some in camp, you seem to want to run the football maybe more. Or are we just trying to develop that run game? Well, I, I think um, – you know, and I said this when I was first hired, the, the principles of the air raid, the philosophy with regards to the approach in the passing game is – the chase space and uh, that is by far 100 percent what we do in the past game we have just taken the same philosophy and added it in, uh, to the to our running game and so that's that's kind of how we game plan the run game and i i just think that if you're going to win a championship if you're going to win a football game there are times where you have to establish the run game and so it's just going to be a little bit more prevalent in our offense uh, maybe than in some other you know pure air raid type systems Coach, without Dawson Knox, how comfortable are you with Jason and Ty and Octavius and Gabe at tight end? You know, it, it's – it's. I'm not as comfortable because Dawson is the number one guy. I mean, he's the uh, he's the true hybrid that we have. He's he's 252 pounds, he's 6'5", and he can run, and he can block in the box. So, he's a hybrid tight end that I think uh, you're, you're going to get once in 10 years, you know. So, I'm most excited, and I am excited to have him. He will not be playing for us in this game. Um, I think the things that the other four players do well, they, they do well. And so we're going to use them in that role. I don't know if any one of those four players is as versatile as Dawson is, and that's what makes him so special. But, uh, you know, Cooley's physical and Ty Quick is physical, and Gabe can play on the outside, and Pellerin can play on the outside. And so we'll use those guys more in the roles that they fit for us as opposed to Dawson Knox, who can do both. Phil, when you were hired, it, it seemed like the feel was that the offense would kind of be a combo effort between you and Freeze, and obviously that's, that's changed, that dynamic. Matt Luke says this is kind of your baby going forward. What's this going to be like for you this week, kind of you know, leading an SEC offense and, and seeing if it works at this level? Well, I would say um, – to be truthful about Coach Freeze, um, he he turned it over. And uh, I spent maybe 10 minutes with him in the offensive staff room talking about X's and O's. I mean, he uh, he asked me what I really wanted the most with regards to taking the position. And I told him autonomy. And he said that was his goal. That's why I was being hired. And uh, so throughout the spring, that's the way it was. So there really hasn't been a change from the spring to the summer. And I, I fully appreciate the fact that uh, Coach Luke has let us run with what we're doing. And I think the kids are getting it now. And um, I want the next five days, but I'm, I'm excited to see what they can accomplish in this system in five days. I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. But in the past, there have been times when the, uh, they slowed down the offense to make sure the defense stayed rested. and uh, But I take it you're not going to do that. I mean, I take it you're going to go. Well, we want to go because we want to put pressure on the defense. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do whatever we have to do to help our team win. You know, and uh, I've said in the past, if uh, Coach McGriff or any defensive coordinator that I've ever worked with, if they saw something in a game they didn't expect and they needed time to coach it up or make adjustments on the sideline, I would slow it down in the middle of the second quarter if it meant helping our defense get prepared for the next drive. You know, I think um, defensively, special teams-wise, offensively, the entire program knows that 
we want to play fast. And so it's, we've kind of been designed that way. So I think everybody's prepared for what we do offensively. But if I had to slow it down to help any facet of the team, I would do that. In the scrimmages, how is communication from the sidelines to Shea and getting the plays set up and all that? Communication with Shea and, and Jordan have been good. I think, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm on the sidelines, so there's no middleman. Um, Shea and I and, and even Jordan and I have some uh, signals just between us. Even if I'm not signaling the game, um, we have some signals between us so we can communicate without having to verbalize anything. And uh, I, th I think right now we've got a, feel, a pretty good feel for each other. So I, I see that as an asset, not, a, not any kind of problem. With camp now complete, how do you like your depth at, at running back? Are, are these guys close to the level of what you think you'll get when Jordan is in there? That's the position I'm most interested in watching compete on Saturday because we're going to play some guys. Um, we have said throughout camp Jordan is the by far the number one guy right now. Um, that's that's no disrespect to the rest of them. The other four have competed heavily. Um, I think um, Penniman has separated himself a little bit in August camp, so he's probably the true number two right now, and you certainly see him on Saturday. But uh, they all they all have a role, and I think if they're healthy, I um, wouldn't be surprised if you saw a little bit of each of them. Is the offense performing or performing at the level you wanted or kind of imagined, you know, after the preseason and headed into the first game? I'll probably be able to answer that better after Saturday's game. But uh, the progress we wanted to make in the spring, we made. The progress we wanted to make in August camp, we made. I think uh, this week is more about some logistical things and just polishing up some of the game plan plays. And the one benefit to this week for our guys, and they haven't fully enjoyed this yet, but when they see the playlist for Saturday's game, as opposed to what they've been running in camp, it's probably about a third of the size. So, you know, they had to know the scope of the offense throughout spring ball because they're learning it throughout August camp because we're trying to get good at what we do. But now going into the game for Saturday, um, you know, there are fewer pass concepts, fewer run concepts, fewer combinations. And so they've got, they've got maybe 35, 40% of what the overall playlist has looked like prior to this week. Do you have any? Do you have any major concerns going into the opening game about your offense right now? You know, I, I I try to live life on the positive side, so I'd like to think we prepared well. I think the guys have worked hard. You know, the theme for Coach Luke was mental toughness in camp, and everything we did was designed to try and develop that try to put the guys in a position where they're uncomfortable, where they have to deal with some adversity, whether it be the weather or the tempo or sudden change or whatever we devise for that day. And I think uh, our guys have done it enough where I feel confident that they're prepared for Saturday. I don't know what kind of mistakes we're going to make. Um, I don't know uh, if we are not prepared for a certain aspect of the game. It would surprise me, though, uh, if Saturday were sloppy. It would disappoint me. I think uh, I think our guys are intelligent, and I think they're ready to play on Saturday. And so it's just a matter now of cleaning things up this week and executing on Saturday. What do you see in South Alabama defensively? You know, they're interesting. They they uh, what they did last year may or may not be what they do on Saturday. Um, they played some man covers last year. They did a good job of playing. Uh, some cover three last year. Uh, they were primarily were a one high defense last year. Uh, we're preparing for one high and two high, so it it it, uh, it shouldn't be a big surprise to us if they change up and do something different than they did last season. You know, it's always an interesting challenge when you're you're seeing a team on opening day that could or could possibly not do what they've done in the previous years. And so the DC is the same. I don't know if the approach will be the same. So we're we really have prepared more for what we typically are going to see every week. You know, everything is very simple to us. It's, it's one high, it's two high, it's man or it's zone. And so regardless of what they do on Saturday, I think our guys are going to be prepared for it.